Hi, this is Dave, Fellow Running Guide. Welcome to another navigation task. And this one is actually a real life one, if you like. It's one that I used with a client on a course last week. And the task was to get from this little crag at point A to find this tiny spring at point B. The weather was very wet, conditions on the foot were really wet and visibility went from being good but when we got onto the highest ground it was down to about 200 metres so just bear that in mind when you're making your choices on this. So let's have a look at some of the ways that we could have done it. Um, probably made sense to hit this ridge and follow this path along in a southwesterly direction. So these are some of the suggestions people have made. I'm going to show you using um, this is Anket mapping software. I'll leave um, a link in the video description if you want to have a look at it because I find it really useful for um, doing this kind of um, this kind of exercise. So head south eastwards to pick up this path and then follow it along in a southwesterly direction until we get to this ford here. So we might notice crossing the first stream there and then another and then another and the path deviates off to the right going up this little re-entrant. So some people suggested getting to there and then from there taking a bearing across to the spring. Now we can see here that that is 490 meters so almost half a kilometer now trying to walk on an accurate bearing over half a kilometer on rough ground and obliquely to the contours that means not going straight up or down them we could easily drift off that bearing and we might end up in here somewhere um, and you could end up hitting this stream and not knowing whether You'd hit this stream or this stream and not really having an idea as to where the, the spring was in relation to you. So probably not a great idea to try and follow a, um, a compass bearing over that amount of ground when you're looking for a tiny little feature like that spring. What else could we do? Well, if we would get to these path junctions here and turn left to follow the bridle way down, that would work. One thing you need to bear in mind with this is this green dashed line is a public right of way. It's not necessarily a path on the ground. We can see that the actual known path is this black dashed line here, which heads up towards back door. So if we wanted to follow a path, we'd have to follow this one, going up here, counting the contours, another contour in there, contour in there and a final contour there so that's going up another 30 meters to then come back down the other side to this junction here but there's a good chance that because this is a bridle way um, we might be able to find this and people suggested to go down this path look out for these grouse butts on the right hand side run along to the last grouse butt and then take a bearing due north and in to the spring. That sounds good. One thing to, another thing to bear in mind or be cautious about is grouse boots are not always really accurately marked on the map. Sometimes they're shown on the map and they're not there in the landscape at all. They're long gone. Other times you might count eight little black dots um, and only find that there are six grouse boots in existence or even there might be nine. And also they're not always absolutely accurately placed on the map where that grass foot is in the landscape so it's a bit of a risky option doing it that way what you could do is you could run down not as far as the end of the grass foot but um, along the, the path and then or down the bridle way if you like and then head due north and pick up this stream and go to the end of the stream and then use that as an attack point to go in so that might be a better way of doing it rather than relying on the grass but so estimate your 
half a kilometre down there, up to the stream, turn right along the end of it, and then in to there. Okay, so that is a route distance of just over three kilometres with an ascent of 59 metres. That's not actually what we did. We started off the same. When we got to this ford here, we then went just east of south up to this high ground, this high point here, and then took a bearing southeastwards, knowing that we'd cross the first stream and then roughly in a 150 metres hit the second stream. Let me just get rid of that previous route. Yeah, aiming for this bend in the stream and then knowing we turned left downstream for approximately 150 metres and then using this end of the stream as an attack point to take a bearing to the spring. Now that all went well until we got to what we thought should be the end of the stream but because the weather had been so wet the stream carried on um, and we paced and we thought we've gone way over 150 meters now and there's no end of the stream it looked like it was going to continue down and join this one but what we did know looking at the map that there was a little tiny black dot here uh, we thought that must be some significant feature on the ground some kind of man-made feature that was worth mapping so we actually stuck on the north side of this stream and handrailed along until we saw it and we went to it it was a little ruined building and from that we took a bearing northwestwards paced out and we got to that spring even though the ground was really wet and saturated we could see it bubbling away with water coming out of the ground so we knew we were definitely there so our route actually looked like that in comparison to that previous route of that. So our route, 2.24 kilometers with 36 meters of climb, quite a bit less and less climb than 3.06 kilometers with almost 60 meters of climb. So that's how we did it. Um, this is, like I said, um, using Anker map software, I'll use uh, I'll leave a little link in the video description. Um, you can have a play with that if you if you like. But yeah, that's how we did it. I hope you found it useful. Look out for some more of these navigation tasks.